So a few months ago, I was in my kitchen doing some homework. My mom was there, and she was making something to eat. And I was doing this assignment, and I was really frustrated because it was one of those things that had just seemed to have gone on forever. You know, something that never really had an end to it. And in my frustration, I blurted out that school hasn't taught me anything, or at least not how to be an adult anyway. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my school, and I think that every single one of my teachers are amazing. But as an institution, it's taught me how to get a job, not how to pay my taxes, how the stock market works, how to live independently. Hey, I barely, barely know what a mortgage is. So as my mom is there, I ask her, and she explains the basics of how you apply for a mortgage, how you pay it back, and so on. But then I ask her how much our mortgage is. And she tells me this astronomical number. And she then explains that that's why her and my dad have to work as hard as they do, and that this is something that could cause them to work for a very long time. And instantly, I'm guilty. I feel so bad, because this whole time, I hear them complaining about things like the water bill, and the grocery prices, and the gas prices, but the mortgage, not so much. And for a second, I was like, wow, these guys really like to complain about the prices of things. But of course, they're upset. Because did you know if you look up the word mortgage, it literally means death pledge? I would be upset too. But the point of the story isn't that I didn't know what a mortgage was, or what school is teaching me, or things about my parents. The point of the story is that I didn't know that I didn't know. Like most of us, I walk around thinking that I know everything that I need to know. I'm set. Why, you might ask? Because I don't know what I don't know. And this is that mentality that if I don't pick the fruit, I don't necessarily care where it comes from, which is pretty apathetic and inconsiderate. But it's something that we all think of and happens to us without even knowing it. And I think the easiest way to combat this is to ask questions. Ask all of your questions. And sometimes it may be scary to ask questions because you don't know if it's a dumb question, which there's no such thing as. But when you ask questions, you let people know that you're paying attention, that you're interested, and that you're listening. And that idea of dumb questions actually leads me to my next point. And it's a cliche, so I already apologize. <laughs> you know, there's so many, what could it be? Is it, it's not you, it's me. Maybe it's there's no I in team. Or is it the infamous time is money? It's actually none of these, it's actually no regrets. To have no regrets. And usually I hate cliches because they're so common and so overused. But do you know why you should have no regrets? Because there's no use in crying over spilled milk. Every cloud has a silver lining and everything happens for a reason. But really, you should have no regrets because in every situation there's always a bright side. Something to learn or a reason that things happen the way that they did. For example, you're late for work or you're late for school. Well, you could have just avoided a car accident and you could tell your bosses and first period teachers that one. But and that's more of a everything happens for a reason kind of thing. And what I'm talking about is decision making. And you'll hear a lot of successful people from a variety of fields say to embrace your failures and the decisions you make even if they seem wrong. Because as long as you learn something from an experience, then it isn't wasted. John C. Maxwell says to fail early, fail often, and always fail forward. Walter Burnell, says failure is the tuition that we pay for success. And Thomas Edison says many of life's failures are the people who don't realize how close they are to success when they give up. But to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter what any of these people say. It matters what you say to yourself in these times that may seem like discouragement and may seem like failure, and whether or not you'll be kind enough to remind yourself that what you're going through is an obstacle which means it's temporary, and that eventually you'll find a way over it, through it, or around it, and that ultimately it's shaping you for your goals. And I know that's something that's really easy to say. It's really easy to say you're gonna get through it. And to be honest, when I'm in those hard times, it is hard to remember that. So what I like to do is I like to think of some of the most successful people I can think of, or people that I one day wanna be like. And I feel better instantly. For example, Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. Michael Jordan. 
Walt Disney, the creator of everything Disney, was fired from a newspaper for apparently lacking imagination and having no original ideas. The Beatles, one of the world's most famous bands ever, were rejected from DACA recording studios who said that they'd never have a future in the business. Oprah Winfrey was demoted from her job as a news anchor because they thought that she wasn't fit for TV. And Albert Einstein's teachers said that he'd never amount to much. Of course, we now know these things not to be true, as these people are some of the most successful people that we can all think of. But it's also apparent that in these few examples that their setbacks were really their setups for the greatness that we now know them as today. And I ask you, if they weren't told no in the beginning, and if they didn't fail early on, would they be as successful as we know them to be now? I don't know if very many people realize this, but this is the first time ever that you can be more than one thing as a person. Before 60 years ago or so, people usually had the same jobs their entire lives. But now we're just so technologically advanced that things are so much more accessible. And you can be whomever you choose to be, and you can change your mind about it over and over again and still be okay. For the first time ever, we have senior citizens enrolling and graduating in university. We have people working in a variety of jobs throughout their entire lives and moving beyond their hometowns. Teenage entrepreneurs are now a thing. And we have more women and people of color in STEM than ever. Now these are just a few examples, but you can see how all of these possibilities make life different. You can change your mind, you can change your goal, you can change your career, and ultimately change the course of your life. But to have these options available to you, you can't box yourself in. You can't limit yourself with reasons why not, and you can't be afraid to take risks. You have to remember that when you box yourself in, that there's no room for you in there. There's no room to grow in there. And it can be quite frustrating, and your life will be consistently boring. But to do all these things, you can't be a type of person. To be a type doesn't just mean that you have a preference. It means that you fit a list of criteria and that you'll always be the same. But how can you always be the same when life's goal is to consistently try and change you from who you are today into who you'd like to be tomorrow? And with all of these amazing possibilities at your disposal, it makes sense that our last tip today is to never be bored. I always have that handful of friends who will text me saying, I'm bored. To which I will always reply with, wow, what a problem to have. Because if you think about it, why should you ever be bored? And sometimes even when we're doing things, we're bored. And that's because we choose to do things that take up our time to distract ourselves from the fact that we have nothing else to do. And hey, I'm just gonna put it out there. I am no saint, okay? I'm so guilty of this. I have a Netflix account and it gets abused, okay? Netflix, every single day. And it's horrible for me. But whatever your distraction is, whatever it is that you use to take your mind off of things, chances are it's to distract you from the fact that you have nothing else to do. There's this kid, his name is Jonah Larson. But before I get to him, I wanna tell you a story. My best friend, Anisha, she usually goes to the mall probably once a month. And not for necessity, not because she needs a specific thing, but just for fun. And one day, instead of doing the same thing that they always do, she decides to go on an impromptu trip to Detroit. Out of nowhere. I know this may be far-fetched for some to just pick up and go, but my point is that there's always something for you to do that you haven't done yet. There is an adventure waiting just for you, and you only. I truly believe that, that every day there's something new for you. And if you box yourself in, and you stay in that box, how are you ever going to find that out? Are you gonna chill out today and say, you know, maybe someday I'll go on that trip that I've been dreaming of? Or maybe when the time is right, I'll learn that thing that I've always wanted to learn. Or maybe when I have a second, I'll pick up that scale that I've always wanted to. We make excuses all the time, every day, without even knowing it. 
about why we should be able and allowed to dream today, but we just can't be bothered right now. So this is Jonah Larson that I mentioned earlier. He calls himself a crochet prodigy, which basically means he can crochet really fast, which is like knitting, if you didn't know. And he's 11 years old, and he says in an interview that he'd one day like to be a surgeon. And the motor skills that he's practicing while crocheting and the hand dexterity that he's learned will actually help him one day in his career. And he's found an artistic passion for something he's good at that benefits him, something that started off as a hobby. And Jonah's better off than a lot of us, okay? He's started a business because he's been able to make everything you see in this picture and more. He's just had an overload of things, so he started a business, and at the age of 11, he started a, re a retirement fund for himself. <laughs> he's found something he likes and that he's good at and that benefits him. He's found a way to take boredom and to replace it with something that actually has meaning to him. Something that I think a lot of us could do if we made the effort. Because why be bored? There's an adventure for every single one of us, handcrafted just for you, just waiting for you. Something for you to learn, a discovery just for you, and a place for you to see. When you're feeling misunderstood, stuck or upset in life, I want you to remember the four things that we talked about today. Because by encouraging yourself to ask questions, you will find out what it is you don't know. And you will find out more about the perspectives of the people in your life. Because the truth is, right now, I have no clue what you're thinking. And right now, you don't know what I'm thinking. No, none of us will ever know what each other is thinking right now, in this moment. You could ask me, but you'll never know if it's true ever. And by asking questions, you're giving people that opportunity to show you what's inside. And you're giving yourself the chance to make a connection. By not limiting yourself to being a type of person, you can really see what it is the world has to offer you. You'll be able to get out of your comfort zone more, and you will learn more about your likes and dislikes. By making an effort not to be bored, you will find out what it is you are passionate about, what it is you love. And you'll start throwing away the boredom that distracts you from being your most alive. But like anything good in life, you have to believe in it for it to work. When you're little, we believe in things like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, and it's magical. And that's because we believe, we believe in it, and we believe it well. And this magic in this belief sustains us, and it saves us, and it's simply because we believe that it will. Thank you.